Welcome back to the 99, where we are focused on brewing a better competitive commander. I am your host, Patrick Marlette, and today we'll be discussing mechanics and keywords I would love to see make a return to commander, let alone MTG in general. But if these were just to come out in commander-only sets, I'd totally be fine with that too, because it's the only format I play, and I assume the only format you potentially play. So you may or may not get a kick out of this one. It is not like our hidden gems. I'll actually be discussing cards that are not keywords and mechanics that are not deciduous. In other words, they're not evergreen to MTG. They're not like Vigilance or Trample or Haste. These are things you don't see too often. They usually pop up for thematic purposes, and sometimes they're really good, and sometimes they're really not. But I'm excited to talk about all of these cards. Again, they're not all hidden gems. Some of them are, but um, you can find uh, uses for a lot of these, and I wanted to talk about a handful of them today. I've got a whole laundry list of cards I want to go over. But before we begin, gang, and, and if you already know this, if you remember the Patreon, but guys, if you want to help support the channel directly, the best way to do so is via Patreon. Your pledges there help to fuel all of the production costs that go into producing the show. As a matter of fact, I'm buying new audio and lighting as we speak, so I'm very excited to add that to our set. But uh, our Patreon members know this already, but you guys get a special not only Discord page to chat with me and the crew, we do pickup games weekly, and Brew Crew members, again, if you're on the Patreon and haven't upgraded your account to the, if you pledge five or more and you haven't upgraded to Brew Crew, be sure to do that because this is actually a preview of what we'll be discussing into September with our monthly topicals, something I extend to the audience here as well as Twitter and Discord. But what keywords do you want to return to Commander and or MTG in general? And uh, well, uh, to, to fill you guys in, I have a lot I would like to return. So without further ado, let's jump into the topic of discussion. Again, these aren't all hidden gems, so don't, don't get your hopes up. But this first one I think is actually pretty viable. And there are actually three types of this mechanic. Uh, the first time it popped up, it was strictly a mechanic, and then it received a keyword, and then it became a functional keyword split card. So we've got split cards from the original invasion block, right? And then we move invasion was invasion, apocalypse, and planar chaos. And then dissension got a handful of split cards as well. But uh, later on, we moved to fuse split cards, which none of which we'll be talking about. They're not very good. And then we got aftermath and Amonkhet. And I'm going to start with the original split cards uh, with rough and tumble. And Rough and Tumble, in my opinion, is a fantastic split card. We play cards like Pyroclasm and, and Clasms in general. Uh, this is another Clasm on one end, and then a separate Aerial Clasm on the other. So the rough aspect of Rough and Tumble, for one generic and one red, add on common, sorcery speed, rough deals two damage to each creature without flying. So that's your basic Pyroclasm, except it doesn't hit everything, right? It's limited like Whip, pl whip Player's limited. It only hits non-artifact creatures. Um, so there is that hiccup, but you do have, it's, it's modal, right? You have two options for this card. You have the tumble aspect. So for five generic, hold on, five generic and one red, tumble sorcery speed, tumble deals six damage to each creature with flying. Okay, I know what you're thinking. That's a lot of mana, Pat. That's stupid. I run Ad Nauseam. I run Dark Confidant in Rakdos. I don't want to take eight damage because... When you are assessing the CMC of a card like this, a split card, you have to take into account both mana costs. So this is an eight CMC card. I get it. Again, not all hidden gems, okay? But, P Papa needs a drink, one second. Ah, so do. Uh, my rubbing alcohol of choice. Guys, Tumble is actually viable. I'm seeing a lot more Consecrated Sphinxes than I want to see these days, but it's also going to pop off and kill the Kess, the Xur, the Avon Mind Sensor, the Hushwing Griff that I pull out at the table all the time now. Tumble is actually pretty viable. Six for six for everything with flying is not negligible. And then the rough aspect is actually quite good for the most part because you're generally not dealing with that many flyers in a given game. So if you're not on a package that has you flipping the top card of your list and taking damage based off the CMC of cards, this isn't a big deal. Having this split card isn't a huge deal. So if you did want to add to your arsenal uh, a double-sided board wipe. This is really great. So it's good long-term and it's good early game as well. And it's very easy to cast at one generic and one red. They're both very splashable effects. Moving on, I didn't convince you. <laughs> I like rough and tumble. Obviously, uh, we're coming at this from the viewpoint of 
these are really interesting mechanics and they can be furthered upon to be better. Uh, yet, unfortunately, uh, they haven't, except for Life Death. This was pretty good, right, when it came out. And this one's from Apocalypse, if I'm not mistaken. But Life Death is something that you see commonly in your reanimate list that include Golgari and Razaketh. So for life, one green, sorcery, until the end of turn, all lands you control are 1-1 one, one creatures that are still lands. Eh, eh, right? It seems seemingly useless. Death, one generic, one black, sorcery, return target creature card from your graveyard to play. You lose life equal to its converted mana cost. So that's reanimate for one more generic. Well, you get two effects, so that makes sense that they would add that tax to death. What's great about this, if you use this with Razaketh, if you're trying to combo off, and this is a very common card in most reanimate lists with Razaketh, so you probably know the strategy already, but you can use this for life and make your lands creatures so that you can get popping off on a loop with Lean and Relic Warder and an animate dead spell, right? Uh, I'm not going to go over the prerequisites to make that happen, but basically when you make that happen, you can sacrifice Lean and Relic Warder in response to the animate or a trigger to get infinite tutors. If you don't know how that works, at me, comment me, talk to me in Discord and we'll go over it. But there are a handful of lists I've used that operate with this combo. By and by, that's just okay by itself. But if you have other uses for your lands being creatures, like anything that requires you to sacrifice a creature to do a thing, even if it's just a lone diabolic intent, life is very good. Obviously death is very good. Reanimate at two CMC is still a very good card. And one, it's outrageously good. At two, it's perfectly fine. So it does matter that you can only reanimate cards from your graveyard. So do bear that in mind. You're not gonna, after you've tumbled down the Consecrated Sphinx, you're not gonna be able to reanimate that with death. But it's very good for your own reanimate strategy. So Life Death, one of the more common ones. This next one, I think this is from Dissension. Uh, no one plays this. Uh, and if you're in Mardu, play this because I play it, and I quite like it. Hide and Seek. It's on the screen now. Hide and Seek is Boros and or Orzhov. Instant, instant. Hide. Put target artifact or enchantment on the bottom of its owner's library. Okay. Not quite removal. Uh, is there a utility there beyond just stunting your opponent by putting their Sylvan library at the bottom of their library? <laughs> No, not really. I mean, this isn't going to stop a Thassa's Oracle, right? You're not going to be able to do that, unfortunately, because she's double blue. So, you know, there isn't that utility there. But Hide isn't the part of this card we're really interested in, though it's very good in a pinch at removing a threat. And it's good it doesn't put it on top because then it would be seemingly useless. You'd have to time this out with like a fetch land. Seek is what we're concerned with. Search target opponent's library for a card and remove that card from the game. You gain life equal to its converted mana cost. That doesn't matter. Then that player shuffles his or her library. If you see someone tutoring for the win, most of the game packages these days are very obvious in CDH. If you don't play CDH and you still watch the channel, still a very good card. But in CDH, you can tell when someone's tutoring for their Demonic Consultation, their Tainted Pack, or their Thassa's Oracle. That is generally the win for... 100, okay, 98% of the list that have blue, it's gonna be Thassa's Oracle, right? Like that's the win. There are just a few decks. Narumea, does Urza use Thassa's Oracle? Probably not. There you go. There's two There's two scenarios where Seek isn't gonna get the uh, obvious card, but Seek is very good at removing that threat before it ever gets tutored from by your opponent. So if it's a Gitrog list <laughs> and it feels cruel doing this, but they're playing a very fragile list. It's it's okay to take their deck Mars Salvage, and they better hope that their Vampiric Tutor is able to grab a Rift Sweeper instead or something that they can use to get that card back. But you're putting a hamper on their plan either way. So Hide Seek, multi-utility, both effects being at 2CMC is very good. Again, if you top deck this and look at it and take four, it's not the end of the world. It's still a very good card. But those are all the original split cards I want to talk about. Again, nothing with Fuse. I think Fuse is a really interesting thing to tack onto a split card. I wish there were better Fuse cards. 
If you use Fuse cards, let me know which ones. I'm curious to find out. Uh, but I want to jump into Aftermath, and these are ones that are definitely very, very good and are underutilized. Now, the one you see most often, and I'm pretty sure I talked about it in my Anya Falcon Wrath list, is cut ribbons, right? Cut two ribbons. Uh, I won't go over it, it's on the screen now, but it's just very good removal at 2CMC, so 4 damage to any target creature is great. And obviously, each opponent losing uh, life equal to X is very good for ribbons. It's a finisher for that list. So you can go ahead and discard that card and gain value from it because of Aftermath, right? So unlike, unlike the other split cards that are functionally two cards in one when they're in your hand, any Aftermath effect, Aftermath reads just so... We have complete rules clarity. Cast the spell only from your graveyard, then exile it. So the first card I want to talk about that is extremely underutilized, and I actually intend to pick up a handful of copies, is Heaven and Earth. Heaven and Earth. This is such a good card. There are so many flying threats. Archon of Amiria, Gilded Drake. I mean, Avon Mind Sensor is a constant Kess, if you're dealing with Kess constantly. But Heaven says, for X and a green, instant speed, Heaven deals X damage to each creature with flying. It's a little bit better than Tumble, right? <laughs> it's a little bit better at instant speed than Tumble, <clears throat> which is still good. Earth, for X and two red, sorcery. You can cast this from your graveyard. Earth deals X damage to each creature without flying. So how is this card effective? Uh, in various ways, just think of the worst threats you have to deal with. If you put X for Heaven at 1, you get rid of the Hushwing Griff, you get rid of the Avon Mind Sensor for 2 mana, you're getting rid of at instant speed the thing that's stopping you from tutoring or the thing that's stopping you from winning with an ETB or effectively getting off a Dockside Extortionist, right? With like a Hushwing Griff. Very good. Heaven is extremely good. And at the top end, we just keep bringing up Kess, she's 4 CMC. So for 5 CMC, I'm just murdering everything that's flying. So like your Birds of Paradise, so sorry. Casualty of War, I meant to hit that Kess, and then everything else gets wailed. The fact that Earth is there, and people will forget that this is in your graveyard. The fact that Earth is just there, for those Dranith Magistrates, for those Deathrite Shamans, it's just gonna wipe a board clean. Uh, depending on how much you make X, and obviously if your creature has the defense to get through this, you're still totally fine. This is a great way to get rid of chump blockers too. Sadly, Earth is not instant speed. Uh, Earth doesn't move that quickly. Heaven, on the other hand, does. But this is a fantastic card with multiple utilities for any list that happens to be in Gruul. Definitely worth playing. I think it's one of those underrated effects, one of those keywords that I would love to see more of and more like that. That one's very good. The next one I want to talk about is Leave Chance. This is Boros. Welcome. <laughs> it's, it's okay here. Uh, leave is one generic and one white. Instant speed spell. Return any number of target permanents you own to your hand. This is lands, this is creatures, this is artifacts, enchantments. Yeah, enchantment sagas. There's a lot of things, right? So Leave is just a preventative measure from any form of removal, right? It's a good way to save your stuff. Uh, and you can wait to the very last minute in any occasion. So the removal's on the board, or you're making a bad block, right, just to recover the thing prior to damage. Leave is very good on its own. But what's great is that you can recycle all the cards you put in your hand, and even if you're just trying to hit threshold on an Underworld Breach, and you'll understand why I'm saying that in a second, chance for three generic and one red sorcery speed, discard any number of cards then draw that many cards. And mind you, because this is in your graveyard, uh, you're net even on the draw here. So you're not losing anything to cast this. You just had it in your graveyard. Thank goodness you did, because all the things you leave, leaved, left, you left in your hand from the first effect um, are all going to equate to draw at this point. So if you're recycling things you did not need at this point in the game, uh, you get a draw. And again, you don't always need this effect. You know, maybe you've used your, uh, what is that card? Memory Jar, right? Maybe you've used Memory Jar, you're digging for a solution. You just don't forget you have Chance there because you can essentially wheel through your list with whatever you have left in your hand to find said solution. Now, mind you, it is sorcery speed, so you're not gonna be able to do it in a moment's notice. 
but on turn, very good to help you combo off. And in Boros, we need card advantage. So the fact that this is tacked onto protection is very good. And there's only one way to read that first effect. It is a form of protection. Against a Cyclonic Rift, well, it was happening anyways. <laughs> but <laughs> at least you know that your cards are safe in hand. Hopefully that person doesn't pop off. They usually don't. I hate it when someone Cyclonic Rifts and does nothing on their turn. Congratulations. You've slowed the game down. The next card I want to talk about, another Aftermath. I'm going like evens on the split cards. I love split cards. These are essentially the precursor to modal double face cards and or just double face cards in general. And I like them, right? We had transform double face cards before modal double face cards. But the Aftermath clause on these is just so smart to me. Um, the next one and the last one I want to talk about is in Rakdos. And it's Claim Fame. So Sorcery, Sorcery for both of them. Claim for one black is return target creature card with a converted mana cost of two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Again, it has to be your graveyard. But you have a lot of options there, right? So in Rakdos alone, you're looking at Dockside Extortionist, Dockside Extortion is Goblin Engineer, Dark Confidant if it died, and that's just Rakdos, right? Those are common cards you see in Rakdos, but outside of that, you can get your Collector Oof back, you can grab your Gilded Drake after it was just heavened out of the game. There are a lot of things you can grab back at 2CMC and under that are very good. And if this happens to be in your graveyard, well, fame, bam. I'm on Scryfall, in case you're wondering what I'm looking at, and there's a rotate feature that is very enjoyable to do. It's very pleasing, rotating these cards. For its aftermath, at one generic and one red, target creature gets plus two, plus oh. Well, that's stupid, Pat. And gains haste until the end of turn. Your Greven list enabled. You're welcome. You know why? Greven's going to be sacrificing that Dockside Extortionist anyways. So claim it. Bring it back. Make seven more treasures because... For some reason, people keep enabling the Dockside Extortionist in these every game I play. Artifact Ramp is so prevalent. A worst case scenario. There's only so few games where Dockside Extortionist is not netting at least four treasures. At any rate. Greven sacrifices things, right? I'm saying this is a Greven card. Fame is enabling haste on Greven, and it's also bringing back excellent cards from your list. It's good. The haste enabling is what you're really concerned with, and having that for 2CMC late game is fantastic, especially when your commander gets removed constantly. If it's a threat, like an aggro threat, people don't want to take 12 damage every turn. Uh, giving haste to that creature lets you get back in the game much more efficiently, and around turn 5 to 6 to 7, you're going to have the mana to cast fame. I think 2 is not out of the question. Now, the next cards I want to talk about are in the mechanic Retrace. And this is a mechanic I, I really enjoy. I enjoy thoroughly. I've never done it with a Renin 6, but I really enjoy it in my Tiny Bones list. So I only have two re Retrace cards I actually actively play. There's one I'm working around. It's going to be janky. You're going to have a little janky section to this video after Raven's Crime. But Raven's Crime... Should be on the screen over there, or over there. I forget. Raven's Crime. One black. Sorcery speed. Target player discards a card. So that's just okay, right? This is just okay. And Tiny Bones, it's great. You're netting a draw. But the retrace aspect. You may cast this card from your graveyard by discarding a land card in addition to paying its other cost. So its other cost being one black. This is essentially what Jumpstart is. And Jumpstart is... A little bit better in that it's easier to cast the spell, but you do have to exile the card. So Jumpstart reads, and I'll read off Radical Idea. You may cast this card from your graveyard by discarding a card in addition to paying its other cost, then exile this card. So this is a variation of Retrace, but lesser in my opinion, because you have to exile the card. Whereas Retrace cards, you get to keep forever. So in a list like Tiny Bones, when you draw, I don't know, with Ad Nauseum or... I've had so many games where I've just, I've started my turn with like 12 cards because I just net so much draw off of things like Waste Not, off of Tiny Bonus himself, that I'm, I'm generally drawing more lands than I need, and I've actually undercut the amount of lands in that list. So long as Raven's Crime is in my graveyard, 
off turn, I mean, on turn rather, I can just pop off a bunch of Raven's Crimes and make my opponents hellbent leading into their next turns. It's fantastic. Obviously, you want a list that nets you a lot of draw, mono black. There's a lot of draw. Necropotence, Peer into the Abyss, Ad Nauseam. Ad Nauseam being the big one, still. Biggest threat in CDH. Worst card to deal with. I've been saying this for years at this point. Has it been years on the channel? I've been saying it for years outside of the channel. Ad Nauseam is, an, is a nuisance. I play it now. I refrained for years, but Thassa's Oracle was worse. So Raven's Crime, fantastic. Retrace is fantastic. The only other card with Retrace, this is the janky section of the video. Um, and this is one of the last two cards I want to discuss before closing this video out. But this video uh, is, is highlighting some interesting mechanics. And I think Retrace on Waves of Aggression is by far one of the most interesting takes on the mechanic. So. For three generic in Boros Boros, sorcery speed, untap all creatures that attack this turn. After this main phase, there's an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase. Pretty good. And it has retrace. So as we know, you can discard a land, do this thing again. I love waves of aggression. I've tried to make it work <laughs> so many different ways. And if you want waves of aggression to work, this is the, this is the janky part of the video. This is the combo I've worked out for you. You're welcome. Someone had to do it. How do I do this infinitely? How do I make Waves of Aggression an infinite combo? Because remember, it doesn't exile itself. I can do this indefinitely. So long as I've got a land to discard, right? Well, modal double-faced cards weren't the answer. Remember, they're not lands, unless you play them as lands, or you play them off the top of your deck as a land, Corsair of Krufix style or something like that. However, we do have a land forest with Dryad Arbor. So here's the combo. Here's the combo of the month for you. Jam it in every list. Waves of Aggression with Savage Ventmaw. So for four generic, green, red. You're in Gruul now, you're in Naya, baby. Creature Dragon, 4-4 four, four body, flying. When Savage, whenever Savage Ventmaw attacks, rather, add triple green, triple red. I read that backwards. Until the end of turn, you don't lose this mana as steps and phases end. And this boy got a reprint in Battle Bond, so pick up those foils fast, because this guy's gonna be spiking after this video. Trust me. You can use Savage Vent Maw with Sword of Light and Shadow. The only time you'll use this card, in Commander at least. Three generic artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, and has protection from white and from black. That's right, Hacker Mauling. You're not gonna murder me today. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, you gain three life and you may return up to one target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. And I hinted at it already, but we have the lone Dryad Arbor. So Dryad Arbor, land creature, forest dryad, 1-1 one, one body. Not just the best green sun zenith target, but also a combo enabler with waves of aggression. So Savage Mentma attacks, right? You generate... Oh, oh, so much mana. You're gonna be net positive one mana, by the way, every time you do this combo. On damage, you're a flyer. You're gonna get in on someone, I hope. You're going to go ahead, gain so much life, three life every single time you do this, and return Dryad Arbor from your graveyard to your hand, okay? I don't care how Dryad Arbor got there. Maybe Dryad Arbor was just in your hand, okay? But Dryad Arbor, <laughs> graveyard, two hand. Go ahead and cast Waves of Aggression with that mana. Oh, how do you pay the double white pad? <laughs> You've got triple red, sir, and it's a split mana cost. So go ahead, pay that uh, that double red, the triple generic, keep a green or a red, and then do the same thing. Keep doing it. Keep discarding the Dryad Arbor. Keep casting Waves of Aggression and using the rest of your board as well because you untap all creatures that attack this turn, so you're going to be swinging with everything. Everything. And obviously, if you're using sort of Light and Shadow and there are relevant blockers on the ground that are white or black, Equip a creature that's on the ground. And you can take your time between main phases, you know, reattaching equipment to make sure you can make the relevant attacks. But you get it. Four card combo. Is it great? Uh, no, I, I tried a list that used, uh, what's her name? Samut. Samut, who's in Naya. Yeah. Yeah, she, but she haste enables. So the idea is Samut would give your Savage Van Ma the haste and then you'd pop off like a crazy person. It's tough, it's tough. I do some janky things here, you all know that. 
but it's tough, the combo I just illustrated. However, if you get what I just stated to go off, let me know in the comment section. Kudos to you. You are an honorary Brew Baby Brew Crew member. I'll have to throw you on the Patreon. I need video evidence, though, of the combo popping off. Now, the last card I want to talk about is one I really love, and a keyword I would love, would love to make a return. Specifically in Orzov, because I'm greedy, I'm a little greedy bitch. I want all I want all white cards to be better. Make white great again in MTG. Flesh Rither for two generic and double white, uh, double white, double black. It's a three-three creature horror with transfigure. Now transfigure. Now this is going to sound very similar to transmute, but for one generic and double black, sacrifice this creature. Colon. Search your library for a creature card with the same converted mana cost as this creature and put that card into play. So for CMC, then shuffle your library, play as uh, only as a sorcery. So eh, eh, as a sorcery, that's kind of bullshit. I mean, they're, look, they're following the same dynamic as transmute. It's cute. I get it. It was stupid. I don't know if transmute was like the bane of standard or whatever for its time but having it at sorcery speed is a little little bit of a knock on the effect admittedly however if you happen to be playing aminatu go ahead and grab your felidar guardian make sure you have a payoff first <laughs> make sure you have your payoff on the field first because i know you can blink infinitely but she didn't do anything unless there's a payoff but also if you happen to use and let's just say you're in mono black so Flesh Rider, 4CMC. What is a combo enabling card at 4CMC? Well, let's just say that on a separate turn, I used Buried Alive. And I Buried Alive, only two things, I'm being cocky here. I Buried Alive Phyrexian Devourer and Walking Ballista. Now, if you don't know what these cards do, I'm gonna read off the eroded text for Phyrexian Devourer, despite what you see on the screen. When Phyrexian Devourer, uh, power equals seven or greater, sacrifice it. That's the less relevant part. That's never gonna be a thing because we're never gonna cast it at 6CMC. Artifact creature construct, eh, one, one body, doesn't matter. Exile the top card of your library, colon. Put X plus one plus one counters on Phyrexian Devourer, where X is the exiled card's converted mana cost. Okay, what are you getting at, man? You buried alive that and Walking Ballista. So Walking Ballista, X, X, we all know Walking Ballista. I'm gonna read it off anyways, because it's a favorite. Artifact creature constructs zero, zero body. The weakest, what are you playing? What is this deck? Walking Ballista enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters, okay. For four, put a plus one, plus one counter on Walking Ballista. Mm, Phyrexian Devourer is a little bit better, huh? Remove a plus one, plus one counter from Walking Ballista. It deals one damage to any target. Okay, so you know, that it looks like there's a combo there, right? You almost have it. Well, Flesh Rither can bring your Necrotic Ooze to the battlefield. Two generic, double black, creature ooze, four, three body. As long as Necrotic Ooze is on the battlefield, it has all activated abilities of all creature cards in all graveyards. The word all was used three times there. That's how good you know this card is. If they use the word all three times, it's got to be semi-decent, right? So you can actually use the transfigure on Flesh Rither. If you want to recycle Necrotic Ooze at this point, you're like, okay, I need another 4CMC creature. You can, right, after you fail. But I buried alive Walking Blister and Phyrexian Devourer. And I flesh ride my necrotic ooze. Well, guess what? I have I have your things, your things, your things, and better yet, my things. And my mono black plan, for some reason, I'm relying on this combo. But it's a thing you can do. I can exile the top card of my library. Oh, my peer into the abyss. Bam, I just added a eight plus one plus one counters. Seven? Eight? I added a lot. And I'm gonna keep doing that. And then I'm gonna use Walking Bliss's ability to just shoot everyone, right? Just shoot everyone for one damage each 1-1 one, one counter. And I'm hoping that with the 86 cards left in your list that you're able to eliminate the board. Sometimes our CMCs are low enough to where that dream won't come true, but for the most part at this point in the game, everyone's life, and when this would pop off feasibly around turn four to six at the soonest, you would have your opponents down to 30, ish life they would have themselves down right the monocrups the fetch lands the ancient tombs the shock lands you get it you're going to be able to damage them out with this and it was all because of flesh rider but wait uh, was that you, you want infinite mana <laughs> you want infinite mana well you just played dockside extortionist that's one part of an infinite mana line 
bam, Flesh Rither, my Emil the Blessed. For three generic, I can bounce creatures, exile them, and bring them back. Dockside Extortionist. Tamir Sabretooth, bounce that shit back in my hand, cast it again. So long as I have at least five treasures dropping, infinite mana. So that's, what is that? That's Jund. So we're in Jund or we're in Naya again. Look at that. Emil the Blessed, Timur Sabretooth. We're just changing the world here with Flesh Rither, all because of Transfigure. And this is the only card with Transfigure. You're welcome. If you've never, if you never knew this ability existed, there was a time where I only played mono black lists. I don't know why that was a thing, but I tried to perfect the formula. It was very difficult because all I wanted to do is make people mass discard. Thank God for tiny bones. That was my list. That was the list I was dreaming of, but the, I did operate with a lot of flesh rider strategies and it actually works. It, it's difficult to get to pop off in mono black, but it does work. And that is an effect. That is a keyword. I would love to have come back to magic and specifically commander. So guys, I would love to know what keywords you would like to see back at the front lines in commander. And I know a lot of these keywords are slated to pop up thematically with different sets, but there are some things that they reprint off in commander only product that I'd love to see more of. I think they did like split second with Kroos and Grip recently in one of those commander sets, but we get, you know, offbeat keywords and sets like that. So please reconsider Transfigure, reconsider all your split cards, reconsider your retrace, because I would love to see more of this and I'd love to know what you guys would like to see. And obviously, again, as I mentioned off the bat, this is the monthly topic for next month. I am excited to begin sharing all of my Patreon Brew Crew members opinions and thoughts on the monthly topic starting September. And again, if you want to support the channel, the best way to do so is with Patreon. Guys, your pledges go a long way here. I've been saving up the dollars I've been getting. I bought a tripod recently. I bought a light recently. I'm going to buy, once that checks out, I'm going to buy another of the same light. It's almost like, it's like, it's like, it's like a thousand dollars, guys, for all these lights. But I'm slowly working on bettering the production here. Particularly audio is the next thing I want to hit. I think the audio is okay now, but it can be better and your help goes into all those production costs. So again, thank you so much. In case you're ever wondering where that money goes, it goes right back into this show. So guys, if you wanna help, your pledge there is the best way to do so. And if you're a member of the Brew Crew, you're gonna have your voices and your input sounded off in our weekly episodes during the month of September with what keyword would you like to see return to Commander? And as I mentioned, there should be a uh, little scrolling name list happening right now, but I do want to do a special shout out to one special Patreon member. And that special Patreon member is, through complete chance, through complete randomnicity, Joshin Redinger. J-O-C-H. E -N, Jocelyn Redinger, thank you so much for your patronage on the Patreon page. You are among some of the greatest fans of this show, and I thank you so much for your help with the production. Again, thank you for joining me on another episode of The 99. Stay tuned for more deck text, topicals, brew wars, and much, much more. My name is Patrick Marlette, and happy brewing, babies.